I, I would love if people would just let Kojima design one of their characters. Well, you see, here's the thing, Kojima doesn't design characters anymore, he hires celebrities. Yeah, that's a fair mm -hmm. point. He's like, here, here's my design of Norman Reedus and takes a photo of him. There, done, there we go, that's my design. <laughs> How's it going, everybody, and welcome back to the season two finale of the HGO podcast. I am your host for today, Ethan, and joining me, as always, are my good friends, Cal and Hunter. Hey, guys, how you doing? Hello. Hello. I'm doing just swell. You know, it's good to be here. I forgot to set up the alerts, so I'm going to set that up while we're talking here, and I'll bring that up <laughs> in a second. It's, 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 it's the season two finale. We've given up at this point. It's it. That's it. 104 episodes. That This season's gone. The quality's gone. Uh, <laughs> I'll sort it out. We'll, we'll do it live, but no. Uh, how are you guys feeling? Can you believe that we're actually at this point and that we've somehow survived another year of this sacred show? I was going to say forbidden uh, show, but there's nothing forbidden, <laughs> forbidden. about it, to be honest. Uh -huh. Either or, really. Either or. You, you, you take your pick, really. You take your pick. But no, it, it, I don't know. The first year, I was like, oh, wow, we've made it. Whereas this year, I'm like, oh, wow, we made it. We sure still <laughs> oh, exist. <laughs> oh, wow. We, we sure did. We sure did. That was a year. Yeah. yeah. There we go. There's the icons. Wow, we did it. It's only a minute <laughs> late. The funny thing is, is we've been, we literally have been like in quote unquote pre-show territory for like an hour and 40 minutes as we figured out what we were doing this week. And it's like, it's hey, true. forgot to do that. But hey, no, welcome back to the show, everybody, where we, for the past 104 weeks, have talked about video games. Sometimes, I don't know if we've done it every time, but we definitely have done it sometimes. Um, oh, you know, there was that one time we analyzed some art. Uh, did we? I made that we did. up. <laughs> Well, no. <laughs> yeah, write that down. Write that down. Best cover art. <laughs> write that down. Season three, right there. It's right in itself. Don't even have no, to talk about like the game. Three, that sounds like a three. That by sounds three. like a three by three. Oh, are they coming back? Oh, You'll have to find baby. out next week. Um, we'll have some <laughs> announcements about season three next week. Uh, TLDR. Don't expect too much, but um, <laughs> we have got some fun things planned. So this episode is going to be a bit of an interesting one. We're going to have two halves. We have going. We're going to bring you in with clickbait in the first half, and then we're going to reminisce about the past year in the second half. So Classic. first things first, we're going to talk, we're going to do a mini topic that we have had on our list. We basically have a li an idea list, basically, of like three by three potential things. And this is one of them. But we don't have enough for nine games each. So we're going to do like a mini shooting the shit kind of thing where we talk about games that look ugly, but we still like them anyway. Uh, and then after that, we're going to do our recap that we did last year. Uh, and we'll see how long it takes us because that episode itself was like an hour. So uh, hopefully that doesn't take us as long this time around so but buckle hey. in for a three hour episode i fucking yeah. hope not because it's already 2 a.m uh, <laughs> well get I ready to not. be up till 5 a.m all right let's go rise and grind um but no it's gonna be a fun one i think you guys are gonna enjoy it um but yeah like i say uh you can go all the usual sh like spiel you can find us on youtube.com forward slash hot gamers only for the video versions every monday or you can go to podcast services by searching for hot gamers only we're going to link tree slash hot gamers only find us where you want leave us a five star review uh do some stuff we're going to set up some goals again that's one of the things we're doing next year so we're going to sort yeah. some stuff out some interesting stuff that isn't just us playing and bitching about video games we'll, we'll come up with some stuff that you guys will be interested in and hopefully that'll help garner some more support uh, as we move into our third year it's not new anymore. If we're shit at this, we're just shit. Like, there's no, like, early, like... <laughs> there's no rust. There's no getting used to it. There's no kind of welcome party anymore. It's, we're either good at this or we're terrible at it. Who knows? Let us know at hotgamersonly at gmail.com what you think. Are we terrible? Tell us. Is HGO overrated? Is Should HGO we overrated? to a cooking show? Yeah, dude. Hot cookers only. Uh, cooking only? Yes. Hot cooking only? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> no cold food no cold food allowed no no cold food no cold food um uh, you know i was thinking about that i'm like hot gamers only why didn't i go with hot games only you know because i'm like you know good as in good games only i'm like no it's about the people not the games who knows i was like yeah you know. anyway let's talk about games that look ugly that aren't hot or ugly no, it's the opposite yeah the opposite of hot not so hot. So basically, this topic was whose idea was this, Hunter? I don't remember. Uh, you Hunter. said it first, and I just remembered that 
you said it. It only took 104 you... episodes, guys, but I came up with an idea. <laughs> <laughs> and funny enough, it was not an idea that could last an entire episode, so way to go be. I really know how to mm-hmm. choose them. This was spurned by your experience with Pokemon Arceus, from what yeah, I know. Yeah, so... That's a good point. We should probably bring that up. So yeah, the reason that this stemmed from me was essentially there's this little game, this little indie game. I don't know if you guys have heard of it, but this little indie game called Pokemon Legends Arceus came out in like January. It must be so indie because they're releasing another one this year. So, you know, <laughs> you can't release two major games. It has to be an indie one. Um, but yeah, that game came out. And I remember saying to you, Cal, in particular, I'm like, I've never enjoyed a game this much that is pros- quite possibly the ugliest game I've ever played in my life uh that game does not look good it's an ugly mess but it's the gameplay is that good that it kind of transcends its visual ugliness it's like it doesn't even look bad either it's just like a like a middle ground and then you see sneezler like an uncanny valley i love sneezler dude i love sneezler i love how he kidnaps you puts you he puts you in his backpack and he's like i'm off maybe i'll (laughs) let you out maybe but no it's games like that where it's like games that you think are not very visually appealing, but you love. And that's, so we're going to do that. We're going to talk about some of these. Uh, I'm going to... How many do you have, Hunter? You have three, don't you? Three. Kyle, how many do you have? Three. Three. Okay, I also have three. I have more than three, but I have a feeling that some of these don't count. So uh, <laughs> I'm going to basically hope that some of these count uh so hunter we'll start with you then because you came over you pre-prepared yours so i hope that means you pre-prepared right. a statement all right so first off this is easy pickings because it's from the ps3 era most things were ugly in that era how dare you the... <laughs> gray has never looked so good yeah uh dragon age origins is not a very visually appealing game it falls into the same kind of gray and brown visuals that the rest of the generation did Mm -hmm. all the hgo bingo players you mark off dragon age right now will anyone else (laughs) will any other than that when anything else show up let's find out oh yeah the answer is yes (laughs) (laughs) i'm just looking at my list and i was like no yes oh god (laughs) you might get bingo this week guys they might get blackout this week oh like yeah, Dragon Age didn't look particularly good. The characters' face, like especially your custom character, their faces <laughs> never looked great. I always put a helmet on my dude is that would like cover him as much as possible. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so I've always wanted like I would settle for a facelift to the level of Inquisition. Even I, it doesn't even have to be like modern visuals. I'll settle for what Inquisition looked like seven eight years ago yeah no yeah i don't know there's something about that generation i mean how many of mine are from that generation quite a few um Uh, i don't know it's just i think everybody agrees that the 360 slash ps3 era of video games at least in 3d obviously the n64 and the ps1 looked rough right but i feel like mm -hmm. the ps3 and the 360 are definitely the generation and the wii to a certain extent where games looked the worst. And I, I, I feel like a lot of them were trying, they were like, we've got these powerful games consoles, time to go oh. realistic, get that grey, get that beige. Dude, mm, the Wii baby. wasn't safe, the Wii wasn't safe either. Brawl, Smash Brothers Brawl's yeah. color palette got muted. Twilight to Princess too. too. I honestly think that this is that the Twilight Princess. I, uh, yeah, but it was on Wii, and it was still that <laughs> Fight era. Fight me, Hunter. <laughs> yeah. Because no, it was in that era, right? It was in that era where everyone was like, gaming's maturing. Every, all the yeah. gamers, they're teens. They're in their twenties. They wanna, they wanna say really bad they things that they depressed. shouldn't say to each other on Xbox Live. They wanna be depressed, and then they wanna, yeah, they wanna just be horrible to each other. So everything just kind of went gray and beige and horrible. Um, mm-hmm. the, I guess one thing I can say about Dragon Age's visuals is there was a kind of layer of I don't know grime to it that set it apart a little bit from the rest of it like it looked dirtier in a way and it's not necessarily good or bad it just you know i'd be i can tell the difference between that and skyrim mm-hmm. <laughs> i was example. tempted to put skyrim on this list but yeah. I don't think and it's Bethesda's games <laughs> never look good either so that's you know. the joke is you know we're gonna you're gonna see starfield later this year and you're gonna see that gameplay and you're gonna go oh wow bethesda's finally reached the ps4 generation uh when it looks like it runs on a fucking base ps4 when it's for series x it's going to be great um 
I love Bethesda games, but man, they are not the uh, most attractive games in the bunch. Um, you know, I'm going to I'm gonna double down on yours, Hunter, because mine kind of the same reason. It's funny you said Blackout, because that gave, gave me war flashbacks to, <laughs> to the same franchise. So I've technically two franchises, two two examples in the same franchise um one this is the one that i was kind of suggesting to you cal i was like it's kind of cheating and that is black ops 3 but with a caveat of black ops 3 for the playstation 3 because (laughs) if people don't know this is quite possibly the worst port in video game history if you have not had the pleasure of looking at how awful this video game looks please go show us the clip from that zombies campaign the one time yeah, the zombies gameplay where yeah. with last as as the community has referred to him, last gen Richtofen, which is one of the characters that shows up where he has no pupils, he's just got black circles, his eyes, and he looks disgusting. And he was that much of a meme that in the following game, Black Ops Four, they included a JPEG of that fucking cutscene as a jump scare in one of the maps <laughs> where you aim your sniper <laughs> at a corner and the scream effect, like the scream sound played, and it was an image of that. And people thought it was a troll. People saw the YouTube videos and they were like, this is bait. This is bait. No, it's in the game. Mm. Um, but no, I love Black Ops 3. Black Ops 3 is my favorite Call of Duty ever because the multiplayer was fun. It was back. It was in that perfect era of people didn't like the future era of Call of Duty, but I loved the jetpacks because it was fun. I could literally stop fucking flexing on people by flying away and wall running and doing all this fun shit. And then Call of Duty went to back to being boring after <laughs> The zombies were the best ever, but man, Black Ops 3 is like the ugliest port I've ever seen in my life. It was cheating. It like It's technically a cheat because it's a last gen port, but my God, it looks like a, it doesn't even look like a PS2 game, guys. It genuinely looks like awful. Beanox did it. Blame Beanox, dude. Like genuinely, it was fucking horrendous. I've never seen a worse port. And then because that's slightly cheating, I'll give another honorable mention to Black Ops 4 and in particular Blackout Hunter. So... Because my reasoning for that is, for some reason, Black Ops 4 looks worse than Black Ops 3, and it came out three years later. Please ah, figure that one out for me. And ah, two, classic. Blackout was that ugly because they had to drop the res and get it to work on a base PS4 that you could hardly tell what was going on. It's like the ugliest Battle Royale, like one of the ugliest Battle Royales I've ever seen in my life. So shout outs to both of those. Wow, for being... that's something, because Player Unknown Battleground, from what I can see, is also very ugly. <laughs> I th- right. I think PUBG on console looks worse than Blackout did on console. But uh. Black Ops 4, for some reason, I don't know why. Black Ops 3, in my opinion, Black Ops 3 is like the best looking Call of Duty game ever made because it's vibrant, it's colorful, and it just looks great. And then for some reason, Black Ops 4 is vibrant, it's colorful, but it looks worse. And I'm like, how? How did you make it look worse? I mean, everything's worse. The UI's worse, the visuals are worse. Like, the textures take even longer to pop in. I'm like, what the fuck did you do? Like, who shat on the code? Who let Andy Gavin in? Like, what the fuck? <laughs> it's just kind of, yeah, it's just an ugly, ugly video game. So there you go. That's two from me. Kind of cheating, but hey, there you go. Kyle, what's your first pick? All right. So I'm afraid to say my first pick. Do it. I'm going to... I'm probably going to get flack for this. It Do is it. Chrono Trigger, specifically the <gasps> character designs. So Look at Hunter's face. Look at it. The him. character designs of Chrono Trigger were all done by Akira Toriyama. Fantastic artist. He made Dragon Ball and other stuff before Dragon Ball. Drew, drew designs for Dragon Quest too, didn't he? He did, yeah. yeah. My thing with Toriyama is that you either really love his designs or really hate his designs, and then you have to take his artwork, translate them into 16-bit sprites, and they just come out as, like, soup. Incoherent soup of just a hodgepodge of ideas. They are very, um, busy sprites. Yeah. Like, Chrono Sprite, for example, that's just, like, Trunks, Goku, like, Tapion, Tapion, yeah. It's like take all of Akira Toriyama's characters and yeah, they're just in frog? Chrono. Are you, t- are you telling me you don't like Frog? A frog? It's just a, a frog, sword, dude. That's yeah, and it's high. awesome. <laughs> yeah, see, your opinion is shit. Kyle is a frog. <laughs> <laughs> he, he cuts a mountain in half. He does yeah, do that. That's it. 
also want to say i do love chrono trigger but on some of the sprite work just didn't translate well from toriyama's actual designs i don't know yeah like i'm looking at some of these designs right and it's like i'm the art style of both chrono games doesn't do anything for me to Mm -hmm. be honest like i've i've seen the artwork of cross of the girl and cross as well that the same render that i think i've I've seen every fucking fan of chrono cross use at one point in their life as a profile picture i've seen you fuckers they use the same image and i don't know why but i'm always sitting there go why they must really like that character or that game because i think that's a really ugly fucking screen like there's no better screen caps for her that's the thing and it's like the ugly like (laughs) i'm not a huge fan of the aesthetic really but also i now that you said that it's the dragon ball like guy that did the artwork for that i'm like that makes sense because i've never been a huge fan of the way dragon ball looks either but mm-hmm. right. i've i've understood i understand that to me that's like obviously that's a personal preference that's not i'm not it's not a bad art style in any stretch right. of the imagination it's just it's kind of like how jojo is a hit and miss for people right like mm-hmm. some people love the artwork for jojo and some people think it's the ugliest thing that has ever been conceived in like the history of uh, animation <laughs> And right. it's like, I get it, um, but and no, like, to me that makes I, a lot of sense. I don't think Toriyama's a bad artist. I just think that for Chrono Trigger, it just comes off as not very well translated to to a mm-hmm. to a sprite based game. No, that's fair enough. And I mean, it's like you get this all the time. People like certain designers and certain artists. It's like how some people adore Namora's designs and some people absolutely fucking hate Namora's designs you know it's like how many bouts can he add it's like you know Dude, showing someone plan. Lulu from Final Fantasy 10 will start like a war depending <laughs> on people's tastes I, I I love the reactions to the Xenoblade 2 characters that uh, <laughs> he designed because it's obvious it's, it's almost too yeah. obvious that he designed them because you just look at them and they are like completely different. But I love how some people are like, oh my god, is that Namora? And like they're super happy. And some people are like, God, why do these look so fucking odd? And I'm like, yeah. <laughs> you can obviously tell when certain designers and certain artists get involved in certain like character designs and stuff like that. And again, it There's is a, hit and miss. I, I would love if people would just let Kojima design one of their characters in just random <laughs> games everywhere. Well you, see, well, you see, here's the thing. Kojima doesn't design characters anymore. He well, hires I mean, celebrities. Co- I, uh, yeah, that's a fair He's point. like, here, here's my design of Norman Reedus and takes a photo of him. There, done. There we go. That's my design. <laughs> right, I should rephrase that. People should let Kojima conceptualize one of their characters. My favorite like, part, my favorite part of Kojima is like, Oh, let's look at this guy. Let's look at... Is it Deadman? What's his name? Like, you know, the Guillermo, Gu- Guillermo del Toro, Toro, yeah. Yeah, Deadman. Deadman. And it's like, that's not even... Gu- Guillermo del Toro doesn't play that character. But still, he just went character just design is my friend pretend. Guillermo del Toro. It was like... It's yeah. Like, <laughs> I'm like, I get Troy Baker being Troy Baker. I get that. Yeah. But And I get Mads being Mads. But I'm like, why the fuck is random guy playing... <laughs> Guillermo del Toro, just for the sake of... It's just because Kojima's like, I'm sticking Guillermo del Toro and you can't do anything about it. I can't wait for his next game where just fucking random people show up again. Because that's what Kojima is. Kojima's just like, yes, I'm going to have Guillermo in my game. Not in a speaking role. Yes, I'm going to have Churches do the oh, the credit song because I like Churches. That's just what Kojima does. <laughs> Kojima that does what Kojima soundtrack does. soundtrack was just his Spotify playlist. It genuinely was. <laughs> To be fair though, Death Stranding by Churches is a banger, so I'll allow it. It is a good game. Mm-hmm. Here it is a good song. Chiverches did a great job. Chiverches did do a good job. <laughs> you love to see it. But no, fair choice, Cal. I like it. Fair choice. Hunter, you. what's your second one? Ah, all right. So this could be broadly applied to most of the studio's games, but oh god, uh, near automata. With the exception of the two main characters, I don't think looks very visually pleasing. You know what? You, as soon as you said that, I was like, fuck, he's right. Dude, that game ugly. That game <laughs> ugly. Yeah. And this is coming from the whole, <laughs> it is the whole time game. I was Sorry, playing guys. that game, I had. I was. This was while I was in Texas a couple years ago. I was playing it in my brother's living room. And the whole time, like every time I turned the game on, he'd be like, man, this game has such a bland color palette. It's like he was trying to convince me to quit playing it. I'm like, yeah, I heard you the first time, buddy. <laughs> well, Nier, like, yeah. Yeah, like, Nier is such a special game because I'm so happy so many people love it. But I, I yeah. keep saying to myself, I need to play it again because it, I didn't get it. 
Yeah. And I feel like, and you know, because so, people's reactions to Automata are so strong, Hunter, that I almost feel like I missed something. Like I'm like, I almost, I like, there's part of me that's like, is it my fault? Did I just not, do I need to go and replay it again because I didn't get it? Because I feel like everybody else has this fucking connection or this goes through this movement with it. And I was just like, I don't know if it was because I was really depressed at the time, but I was just like, you can't fucking kill me, dude. I'm invincible. <laughs> I'm like, yeah, babe, but, <laughs> you can't like, get me. I feel like this could be applied to a lot of Platinum games too. Like Bayonetta, at least the first game, Bayonetta looks really good, but the environments and stuff aren't great. You yeah. Know? Same with Astral Chain. Yeah, you know. Now, the, now, the now that you think world. about it, platinum. Although I will give, I thought Scalebound did look pretty good. I know it never happened. <laughs> the one but, that never happened. Yeah, the yeah. one that never <laughs> happened had a really interesting art style, though. Like it was kind of like, but they were doing more like even then they were doing like jungles and stuff like that in that. But it was still like kind of muted. Like the greens were kind of muted. It was kind of yeah. it didn't necessarily pop as much as you'd expect. But I don't know if that's just because I recently played Horizon Zero Dawn and that game's like, what happens if you turn your contrast up a bit too much? You know, like, <laughs> yeah, there are no jungles that look like Forbidden West jungles because I'm like, even green, even green's like, hang on a minute, that's too green. Like, what the fuck's <laughs> going on here? There's not enough chlorophyll for this level of green. Uh, but no, but yeah, platinum games just do always and i know that's kind of the vibe especially for near i get that that's the vibe right the game yeah the game's it's vibe it, is it, dreary it is and... thematically appropriate for near but you know <laughs> you could it could still look better it's kind of like how fallout's aesthetically ugly that doesn't make it not ugly do you know what it does it reminds me of you know if you turn your brightness up in game a bit too much and you get that kind of kind of grayish filter on a game yeah. sometimes that's why that near automata has that constantly that's what that game feels like it feels like it constantly has like a filter over it where it's like do i need to turn the brightness down because it and, looks and like to be fair i'm pretty it's sure it's trying to put that gray filter over your perception of life so yeah genuinely it's just, <laughs> yeah you will be sad and you will like it um but no yeah but yeah the character designs in Platinum's games are solid, though, most of the time. Like, the ones that matter anyway, like I said. 2B and 9S both look good, and their other games, Bayonetta looks good, you know. Yeah, it's an interesting one, that. I didn't really think about it that much. But yeah, mm -hmm. I think I think you're right. They do look a bit grey, and just a bit yeah. kind of lifeless. And it's <laughs> like, for near it works, right? But I, I do feel like I would like a bit of color. I think that's why when I looked at the the Nia remake that they did, well, the remaster, and when I looked at it and I was like, w like people were struggling. Is it a remaster? Is it just a remaster? Is it a remake? Have they redone stuff? And I think it is because it is the <sighs> Nia art style is very much PS3 era kind of art, you know, where it's like, yeah. it looks gray, looks matte. And it's like hard to tell the difference. I still do need to play the Nia replicant. 1.00670. Me too, but I have so much time to do it once I'm done with Ghostwire Tokyo in a couple weeks. True. Yeah. So much going on, but no, I I agree with you now, and I'm kind of sad I didn't put that on my list. Yeah. My gray award goes to another game that's from the PS3 era, but also very gray. No one can argue with me that this game is not ugly as shit, and that is the original Infamous for the PlayStation 3. <laughs> Quite possibly the most ugly Sony exclusive I have ever seen in my life. If you have never seen a, a screenshot of Infamous, please now go into your Google Images and type in Infamous PlayStation 3, because I know that Kyle has never seen a screenshot of Infamous in his life. Dude, the first Infamous game was not visually pleasing. It's so ugly, and it's it's kind of funny, because how the fuck do they go from sly to that because sly is like so colorful and it pops and it has this that kind very of gray darker tone to it like there's so many night levels in sly and they you think they would have gotten used to it and it's weird because they have the comic book kind of hero art style so you feel like it would you feel like going it's... for a more stylized tone would have actually suited the game more i know right if you put if you put second son and the first game next to each other and told me they were from the same series i'd be like really yeah it's it's ridiculous how nasty that game looked i have never to this day finished the original infamous and that is because i get bored of looking at it like halfway through <laughs> like legit i have never finished it 
Because I get to the same point and I just stop because I'm like, God, it looks so ugly. Also, the checkpoints in that game are fucking awful. But, <laughs> man, it just, it looks great. It doesn't run particularly well either. And it's like, I see the potential. I see the potential of Infamous because people always hate on Infamous Second Son. And I'm like, bitch, did you, if you like, you liked the first game. How can you complain about Second Son? <laughs> you liked the first game. Second Son is vibrant and it just feel, flows so well. And also, I just, electricity powers, man. I'm just going to say it. Overrated. Electricity powers are overrated. Shooting lightning out your hands. Fucking overrated. Being able to turn into like pure fire and ash and shit like that and neon, way cooler. I said it, way cooler. <laughs> Being able to turn into ash and go through a vent and then shoot up through the roof and then like reemerge. Sick gameplay. Dude, the the open world design in Infamous Second Son was really good. Moving around in that game was a lot of fun. Yeah. That's why I'm kind of sad because if, if this new Infamous rumor is true and there is a new Infamous cover. I have a feeling they're going to go back to their roots a bit on no, it. And I'm like, no. oh, no, don't go back to electricity. No, boo. <laughs> I don't want that. I don't want that. I'm scared. I'm scared of it. I'm, to be fair, I'm also scared of this new Sly game. What if we look at it and it looks ass, guys? What if it looks ass? That's what, like, what happens? What do we do then? What do we do if it looks like a fucking Disney Channel cartoon? What are we going to do, guys? Actually, to be fair, oh. some Disney Channel cartoons actually do look pretty decent. So that's kind of a bad comparison. <laughs> but you get my you get my point. You get my point. Yeah. Uh, is it my go? Oh, no, I just went infamous. <laughs> <laughs> Season two finale, everyone. Hey, he's already checked out. <laughs> He's already gone. <laughs> He's dead. Woo! Anyway, <laughs> Kyle, your sh- your time to shine. Um, yeah, it's an easy target. We're bullying Pokemon Sword and Shield again. Oh, woo! woo! Do you Go want on. your Switch game to look like an N64 of a game? <laughs> oh. Because we got that. You circle the trees in red for me. Oh. Don't worry, Ethan will do that on the thumbnail. I will not. Please? It'd no. Be funny. No. Go from all these is blank overrated to just having a bunch of circles and arrows. No, I refuse That'd be to go hilarious, that far. Dude. I refuse to go that far. Have that as our mm-hmm. season two finale. No. <laughs> I refuse. That's going too far. How it's Catch started. one of How's us in a going? goofy face and then circle it in red. <laughs> yeah, exactly. See, uh, here's the thing, right? Is I agree with this when it comes to the wild area. I yeah. don't get the hate for the towns. I genuinely don't. The towns just feel very bland. But you fucking you just went through Kinda Sun and lifeless. Moon. You just went through fucking Sun and Moon. This is my thing is, if I'd agree if we hadn't just been through fucking generations of 3D Pokemon that also looked lifeless. Yeah. So it's like it's the same fucking thing, dude. <laughs> yeah, but people Why'd acted. You pick this people one they didn't improve. Moon. People, this no, is just more on my mind. People uh, take it as if I, that game personally offended them, and it was just that one. And I'm like, they're the same picture. Look at Gen Seven. <laughs> Look at Gen Six. They're all lifeless. I think it's because it's on the Switch where people are like, okay, come on. Yeah, it's like it's the first mainline game on a home console. Yeah, not counting shit like Coliseum and stuff like that. Hmm. But no, it's like, I get it. Like, they are, like it's they're just not the greatest looking games. Yeah, it's but... just because it's a home console where it's like, that's when people start to take notice. Yeah, but look, think how great the remake is going to look, though, dude. Think how great that's oh. going to look. With it's the gonna... chibis? I don't oh, even no. want to think about a Gen 8 remake. Yeah, well, it will happen one day. terrifying. It'll happen in like 10 years. Ugh. Ugh. Uh, they get the Kyle are quickly running uh-huh. out of games to remake. They've only got Gen Five, and then they're back. Then they're remaking the three D games. <clears throat> oh no! I think it'd be funny if they downgraded. Well, like if they did a two D thing where they where they turned the three D games into two D. HD two. I think that'd be such a cool <laughs> idea. Is they spent all this time turning the three the two D games into the three D style? What if they then turned the three D style into the two D just for fun? I think that I be think that'd be hilarious. Pretty cool. They wouldn't ever do that, but it'd be fun. But now I get it. Yeah. They do look ugly. But Wild at the area. same time. Like any open area in that game is just 
miserable. Yeah, the wild just area pop, does look like, like ass, dude. Everything just pops in and out. Shit, random Pokemon will just pop up and right in front of your walking path. It's yeah, like, they definitely improved it. Would you like to offense. battle, sir? Yeah. But I, they don't I, even I, ask. I do they, just, they just fight. They do just fight. Oh. It's not like Arceus where you can just avoid battles. Yeah, just throw shit at him. That's why I'm not looking forward to Scarlet and Violet because I know that I'm not going to be able to just solve shit by throwing things at them. Mm -hmm. Because you know it's going to to start a battle. So it's more like Pokemon violent. Yeah. (laughs) Basically. I it's just, I just, it's gonna be so shit. It's gonna be so boring. I can't wait to play it and be disappointed. Can't wait. Dude, just be like me and don't buy it. No, I'm gonna buy it. Hear me out. No, it makes good Stop podcast giving content. Pokemon money. It makes good podcast content, and if we're still here, we should still be here by November. <laughs> <laughs> Unless sure the world's gone so. to shit. Um, Unless something went really wrong in the world. Yeah. But we should still be here doing it. I mean, I meant more in the sense of if we'd given up. But I'm like, well, we've been going for two years. I feel like at this point, I don't know what would make a start. Series finale? See, season finale? Yeah. Like, I don't know what would make a start at this point. But yeah, yeah it's just that game's going to be a goldmine for content because, you know, we can. We, is Pokemon Scarlet Violet overrated? I could make the thumbnail right now. Save myself <laughs> a job in 10 months. Uh, it's just Glorp, true. and that's it. Just Glorp. Yeah, exactly. With a circle <laughs> around him. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I know there's the two people listening right now. Is, oh, God, they're going to carry on the overrated shit in season three. I'm like, hell yeah, we are, dude. Hope you're ready for... <laughs> hell yeah. I hope you're ready for is 26 amazing strategy games overrated. Dude? Like We're just going to add is overrated to every title. Wait That's till what the O and H G O stands for. No. Overrated, yeah. <laughs> Question mark. Hot games overrated. Like yeah, there you go. <laughs> that's, the new, that's what we'll that's what we'll rebrand to. Um but yeah. Anyway, Free let's do incompetent. <laughs> Free incompetent. <laughs> that was the yeah, thing I was trying to remember the other day. Yeah. It's our tagline. Yeah. Anyway, Hunter, what's your final pick? We'll do one more round. Ah, right, okay. My final pick, and this is hilarious because this is like the reverse problem of Platinum, where I said that the character designs for who was important looked really good. This is the opposite. Bloodborne's atmosphere and like environments look really good, but the models for the monsters and the people, not great. I see. I don't want to piss off Souls fans again because I feel like I do that on a regular basis. Um, But I was going to literally say this: that other than the Demon Souls remake. I don't think there's a like. I think every Dark Soul, like I think every From Software Souls born game, and Sekiro. I'll give them Sekiro actually. Yeah, I was I gonna think, say yeah, Sekiro was, looks. I was waiting I think, to see where that sentence was going. I think everything apart from Sekiro looks ass. And when I say that, I don't mean like they they look they they look fine. But I mean when you compare the year they came out to what is actually like when you compare it to other developers and other things they look like shit like Elden Ring like Elden Ring looks good don't get me wrong but when I see it running on PS5 and it not running that incredible I'm like this is a glorified PS4 game like how the fuck is Forbidden West running at the flawless 60 and then Elden Ring sitting over here shitting itself when I see a horse that's (laughs) clearly a dog because the text told me it's a dog (laughs) so with Bloodborne specifically, I remember the Blood Starved Beast. When I fought that thing, I didn't really know what I was looking at until I looked at the concept art. I knew it was like a cleric beast, but I didn't know what the deal with I didn't know the deal with its flappy skin was. I didn't know where it was coming from or anything. I'm like, oh. When I looked at the picture, I'm like, oh, its back was flayed. Cool. See, I didn't know that. I just I just hit the thing. Yeah. That's literally me and, and, me like and a soul game. Other... I'm like, don't care, hit the fucker. I don't care what you look like, I'm hitting you. <laughs> Either way. Don't mind what you look like. Where's my fucking whack whack whack? Where's me mallet? <laughs> literally. And there's there's a dozen there's a dozen other things in that game that I couldn't tell. Like what is it, the Witch of Hemwick? Apparently the like weird warts on it were were eyes. I thought it was like a fungus or something. It's like, don't get me wrong, yeah, it's just 
It's just weird to me. It's like Bloodborne. Don't get me wrong. The art design is really well done, and it looks yeah. Like the art, the world looks fantastic. and environmentally, it is impeccable. I could walk but around the hunter's dream forever. <laughs> it's like this game came out in like the same year as, and I know you don't particularly like this video game, right? But it came out, and I, I also think it's unfair because I still think man, there's so many. I still think there's not many games that actually topped it graphically uh, in the generation. Arkham Knight came out in the exact same year. And I'm like, how did we have that quality of character model and animation? And then we get over to like some games like Bloodborne, which is also a fantastic game. And like I said, like world design is fantastic. But when you look yeah. at the fucking faces of the people in that game and they look like they're fucking clay and you're like, how? How are we in the same kind of league? Much like Dragon Age, I tried my best to cover up my character's face. Mm-hmm. Uh, I Which know. Thankfully, yeah. you know, all their hats and stuff, you know, come with like a mask. But yeah, for example, like Dragon Age Inquisition came out the year before Bloodborne mm-hmm. did, and it looks better. That's that was that was like Dragon Age Inquisition is amusingly like my benchmark for a lot of uh, games as far as that. It's probably like, a bad benchmark. Of the year. Like, I don't know why. Yeah. Arkham Knight just always stays in my head when I'm comparing graphics things, but I'm like, it's not fair because I don't get how I don't get how that game looks so good for 2015. I still don't get it. I still don't fucking get it. I remember seeing Arkham Knight and I was like, holy shit, this is the start of the generation. I can't wait to see where we end up. And when and really it was just everyone else caught up to Rocksteady while they spent nine years in development <laughs> hell. I'm like, wow, there we go. That's what happened, I guess. But no, I do agree with Bloodborne. I do as much as I love Bloodborne. It's can't wait till Blue Point makes book. Bloodborne too and everything. Hell looks yeah! Good. Am I right, guys? New <laughs> IP. <laughs> God, all these all these PlayStation Studios working on sequels, guys. Can you believe it? Holy shit! Imagine a new game coming out. That's what my thing was. They even stuck the fucking the indie art team, Pixel Opus, apparently on Sly. I'm like, nothing's sacred anymore. It's only sequels, baby. <laughs> can't wait for Tom Holland to be a fucking ancestor of Sly. He's gonna be great. Can't wait. Pug chap, let's go. It doesn't even have a name, it's just Tom Holland. Tom Cooper, dude. It's Sly's son. Tom Cooper. Yeah. Hell yeah. Sly's son, Tom Cooper, starring Tom Holland. And Sly's been recast as Mark Wahlberg. <laughs> and Knuckles. <laughs> and we'll be the first people to have Kevin Miller on the show. We'll bring him on. We'll let him out of your closet. Season we'll talk three. About, yeah, season three. Will he, will, he, will we let him out? <laughs> Funny thing is, if we ever had him on the show, would we mention that joke to him? I feel like we'd have to. Or would we Or would we just bring it up in the podcast and you'd just be sitting there smiling, just not knowing what's going on? I think that'd be funny. I think he's got 104 episodes of lore to catch up on. We better send that Can email. We better send that we, email out now. Really yeah. think imagine, about it. <laughs> imagine if we did get like a guest who actually has things to do with their life and they went through the trouble of listening to the podcast up to the point that we were at. <laughs> I, I think it'd be funny if they were like, oh, let's have a listen in to see what I'm up for, and then they'd be like, mistakes have been made, where they just see <laughs> me shitting on something for the 16th time, and it's like... Honestly, the smart thing to do would be like... Just be like, here's like two episodes to get a feel for what these episodes are like. Yeah. Have I, fun. I, I ignore Ethan saying something really stupid in it, and it's fine. <laughs> Ignore the fact Ethan hates Kirby. I fucking hate Kirby, dude. It's so shit. Oh, I've done it again. I'm fucking... <laughs> Gonna lose a subscriber again. God damn it. Oh, well. We don't want Kirby. <laughs> Jeez. <laughs> that was a joke. That was a joke. Please. I'm, I'm, I'm perfectly happy with that you like Kirby. Please share your enthusiasm with me because I fucking need it to get through one of those games. Jesus. Um. Right. Everyone tweet Ethan cursed Kirby memes where he's like eating things. <laughs> Maybe Kirby that should be with um... feet. Yeah, Kirby feet. No, Kirby please don't. Feet. I hate feet. Please don't. Please. <laughs> no, that's like my nightmare. He hates feet and he hates hate Kirby. Feet. Right. So I've got two here that were question marks that I can't decide between because similar to you, Hunter, you're similar to your Bloodborne one, where one of these, I think the characters look all right, but environmentally it looks awful. And then the other one is. I think it looks all right, but the character models are fucking awful. So I'm going to say both, uh, just okay. for fun. First one, and here's where we get the hatred uh, going. Let's let's roll down the window because we're not done throwing abuse at our audience yet. Persona <laughs> three and four. 
Oh my god, I took that off of my list. <laughs> well, I did it. <laughs> because as much as I, like, I think the worlds look fine and, like, stuff like that. I've said it before and I say it again. I want these games to be remade for the sole reason of the fucking character models are awful. Yes. They are absolutely. fucking horrendous. And give him the chibi jeebies like the Pokemon remake. They do, the, they do give me the chibi jeebies. I hate them. And it, it's a shame because, like I say, I, I honestly think that if they redid... I would like... I already really like Persona 4, but I think I'd like it that much more if the character models weren't so fucking shit. And I get yeah. that it's a PS2 game and there's limitations and I get all that. But I'd like but to see it. Weren't. Yeah. I mean, Atlas will never remake a Persona game because they hate the idea of money. That's why they're releasing a game that has the story continuation of Persona 4 and Persona 3 on consoles that don't have a way to play Persona 4 and Persona 3. Because, you know, that's how they do it. Um, I love Atlas, it? dude. Fucking hell. They're genuinely. great. I love how they, I, I, my favorite part about Atlas, I love you Atlas, but it's the fact that they gave it like a spoilers, like streamer guidelines for a game that's eight years old. And my favorite reply was like, they're like, don't stream these certain story points. And people were like, it's eight years old. And then someone's like, also you're already spoiling the fucking actual games. Cause no one on switch or PlayStation four has fucking played four or three. I'm like, true. You're literally going to spoil <laughs> both of them instantly. So it's all fun. But no, it's just Persona's just I, I I wish they'd remake. I'd, yeah. I'd love them to remake any of the Persona games, to be honest. But especially because one and two don't exist. Let's go to three and four, shall we? <laughs> <laughs> uh, the other one, which is more environmental, uh, but games that I really love. Again, we're going back to that PS3 era. Saints Row three and four, because they're both the same fucking uh-huh. game. I love Saints Row. <laughs> Saints Row. Has a sort of like a special place in my heart because I didn't grow, I didn't like GTA I didn't grow up with GTA, but Saints Row had a safe little soft like little place in my heart because Saints Row is basically what if GTA didn't care and had the cheats on by default was basically what Saints Row has always been where it's been stupid shit like here you go have a fucking dubstep gun and fly around and you know have like. A break into a massive skyscraper while Kanye West's power is blasting through the fucking game <laughs> and it's like you know you just have stupid shit and stuff like that and the games are so much fun and I like them a lot but they are ugly as shit like they are like mm-hmm. ugly ugly video games and it's like even with the remasters they did a 4 and 3 they still look ugly as hell like they're not good looking video games they are straight out of that PS3 boxy grey looking era and I'm like man I had so much fun but looking back, I'm like, oh god, turn the color up. And now that I see Saints, mm. the new Saints Row, I'm like, I'm liking how it looks visually. But I also feel like a lot of the personality has been taken away, and I'm like, oh no, are we now in this middle ground where I like this one for the opposite reasons. Where I'm like, it looks oh, good, but yeah. I think the person, I don't know. I'm waiting to see. I'm optimistic about the new Saints Row, but I genuinely do feel like the personality has kind of gone away. And I'm not talking about beating the shit out of people with dildos. I'm just talking about the, per- <laughs> the, the personality of Saints Row in terms of like the comedy aspects. It seems like they've kind of dialed it down a bit. And I was like, especially in a world where GTA is already a thing and GTA has kind of gone a bit crazy. I feel like the last yeah. thing you should really be doing is dialing it down. I get not wanting to do superheroes again, but dialing the tone and the comedy what makes saints row saints row down is a bit of a stupid idea to me but hey there you go <laughs> right go on then kyle bring us home you didn't say All persona because right. you're a coward so what's your final one you can't <laughs> hate, you can't be hating another fan favorite game from our community surely dude surely i can no <gasps> yes no yes what is it xenoblade on the wii no kyle why didn't you say that i just bought it you're telling me it's ugly <laughs> <laughs> yeah, dude. Oh, guys, go, plug that, go plug in that. Go plug in that Wii. You don't it's own fine. and look I'll at just, it. I'll just play the 3DS version. That surely <laughs> looks better, right? Oh, it's gotta. Sure, it's gotta. gotta. It says it says new on the box. <laughs> it says new on the box. Oh god. Yeah, I I fully agree with this one. But go on, elaborate. These are just like comedically bad character models. <laughs> They're fucking awful. Like genuinely. And like for what they had to work with on the Wii hardware, like they made those environments look pretty, pretty good. But also, 
I can't get over Shulk's derpy ass face in that video game. Just, just, I'm getting, look at him. Fucking hell. Melia's look hair. You can, like, see, you can see where the hair on Melia's, like, where the curves, like, wow, do I, Melia's little hair swirls. You can see, like, where the bends are on the model. <laughs> Let's have a look. That was a difficult Oh sentence. my god, yeah, it does. Like, you can see the fucking. It looks more hexagon as we point and laugh. Like, hexagon. Like, it's, it's no swirl, it's a hexagon. <laughs> like, God, Honestly. yeah, Xenoblade 1 is like such an. Oh my God, it's so ugly. And I'm like, thank God. Like, th I know Nintendo's favorite thing to do is fucking port Xenoblade 1 to a new console. It's their new favorite tradition, right? At this point. Ever since. Ever since we, they have not stopped fucking porting or at least putting it on backwards compatibility with Wii U, right? They just don't mm -hmm. stop re-releasing that game. I'm so glad they did re-release Xenoblade 1 yeah. on Switch with a similar art style to 2 because, man, I remember when people complained about 2's art style going, oh no, they made it anime. I'm like, what would you rather have? Ass? Like, look at this. Ass. Like, it's a JRPG. It's like it's like, always been anime, dude. It's just the Wii couldn't process that. Like, honestly. And then there were, then you had all these chuckle fucks when DE got announced and said, "This game looks ugly. I want the original one back." And I'm like, "Do you really? <laughs> Do you really want 480p Shulk back?" Hell yeah, dude. Why don't There's they have fucking... the mode where you can toggle between it? <laughs> <laughs> Just go into Papega mode. Like. RTX on and off. <laughs> exactly. Like uh, it's a, it's an ugly Papega mode. <laughs> it's an ugly, ugly game, but. <laughs> And you know, Xenoblade Two, Xenoblade Two. I love the art, the art direction and style yeah. of that. Obviously, the character designs are love or hate. I still love Rex's goofy ass outfit, dude. It's so dumb, but I I have a soft yeah, spot dude, it's for it. It's like that's his work outfit. Yeah, and you that's something think... people have a hard time understanding. I mean, the thing I have a hard time to understand is what's that? I'm going on. I'm taking a break from my job to go and basically take the Aegis to the world tree. Let me change out of my work uniform real quick. Fucker didn't have a chance. He was just like, ah, I'm just staying in it. I mean, he can still do salvaging in the worlds. Yeah, true. But he could have just also, kept it in, a, like, in his backpack, dude. But also, in Chapter 7, you get a space suit. Yeah, it's pretty cool. Which is yeah, like cool. Omega Drip. <laughs> but no. Think about it. God. But no. It it doesn't it doesn't like run very well, but it does. I I still think it looks great, even if mm -hmm. it does go to four eighty p at times as well in the handheld mode. It still <laughs> looks like a good four eighty p unlike in the Wii handheld. <laughs> yeah, God, I can't wait for Xenoblade three. That's going to be a fun time in September, guys. Can't wait. God, that's so far away. We are going to milk the shit out of it, guys. Don't you worry. We're going to do a we're going to do a what we want to what we want from that game episode. We're going to do a first impressions episode. We're going to do a spoiler cast of it. Fuck it, both me and Cal will probably be buying the special edition so we can do a comparison between the EU and NA version because there's always a difference with those. It's the because EU. Two separate unboxings. Yeah. Oh, shall we Yo, start unboxings, unboxings, dude? Yo, guys, yeah, what's dude. going on? Let's open this box. Let's get in there. Let's open up this box. <laughs> I'm going to do an unboxing. I'm just going to take it out of like the cardboard sleeve like Amazon or whoever puts it in and then leave the box like sealed and be like well that's my unboxing guys thanks for sure, thanks for sure. i'd like to do an unboxing video where instead of taking something out of a box i have a box that i like break down so it's no longer box shaped hell yeah like collapse the box like a proper <laughs> unboxing yeah. like collapse the sleeve be like yeah and then we put it into recycling <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> and the bins go out on thursday and there you go like that's how it works um but no, I, I am looking forward to Xenoblade Three. But man, Xenoblade oh, One I'm looks so like excited. ass. Yeah, dude, will it be game? What what year? Dude? What a year we have to look forward to. <laughs> so many fucking games, dude. Like now that I know that like Gotham Knights and potentially Forspoken, if it doesn't get yeeted again, are coming out within the span of two weeks. I'm like, not again. Not Elden Ring Horizon again. I'm it's not. It's like, why can't you just space these better? Yeah, <laughs> there's a whole spring and summer now of nothing <laughs> literally, May's looking literally, pretty empty May is right literally, now May is literally doing the fucking like that's catch up time like, yeah, yeah. Like, that is game pass oh, yeah, time that is, that is game pass time 
I've got so many games I need to catch up on. Like genuinely, I've still I've still not started Elden Ring because I'm too busy playing Guardians of the Galaxy. Because Phil Spencer's got me over there with Game Pass, going, "You want to play that game <laughs> that you refuse to pay full price for?" I'm like, "Yes, Phil. Yes, I do." <laughs> yes, Phil. That's what my Xbox is going to be. It's going to be the Square Enix machine where Square Enix keeps shitting out all these <laughs> fucking games and they keep going to Game Pass like three months later. That is genuinely what, that's genuinely what I'm going to be like. Oh, like, oh look. <laughs> It's, it's time whatever. for Strangers of Paradise. Yeah, it's time for Strangers of Paradise. Oh, it's time for the Diofield Chronicle, Lou, whatever the fuck. Because it, it did Chronicle. that shit on PlayStation oh, that they've ported man. it to Xbox oh, just yeah. to put it on Game Pass. Can't wait. There we go. <laughs> Holy Diver strategy. Yeah. SD3D. Oh, <laughs> SD3D, dude. Can't wait for my SD3D video games. <laughs> oh, fucking Platinum Games looking ass. All right. Okay. Babylon's full. But why are we oh, we haven't played Babylon's Fall? But give shout out to Babylon's Fall. You definitely deserve. Oh no, it's a bad game. Take it back. Yeah, it's supposed to be good games that look ass, here. not ass games <laughs> that look ass. My it's apology. a game that looked like it was going to be good when we first saw it, and then <laughs> see, I don't even remember seeing it for the first time. So I think you made that up. I think Me it's either. always been terrible. No, no, dude, I went back and looked at that trailer again. I'm like, right, that does still look like something. I would nah, I think I think in. you've been taking too much copium, dude. I think <laughs> I, I, I honestly think it was always garbage. You just never knew. Uh, yeah. You just never knew the truth. So there you go. Anyway. There's our mini topic that ended up taking longer than I that thought it would take. Fifty-two minutes. You love to see it. On to other <laughs> things that were always garbage, but we never knew the truth. <laughs> the actual podcast. <laughs> season two. Season two, more like season poo. Am I right, gamers? <laughs> if we can get through this season, we can get through anything. Pog. Um, no, last year we did a episode where we just talked about our highlights and stuff like that and this year that like the reason we did that last year was because we were an episode behind and so we very sneakily did an extra episode where we just patted ourselves on the back for an hour and we were like <laughs> we did it 52 episodes guys but this time we actually did manage to do 52 episodes uh, without doing that so we're just going to put it in here now it's so if you miracle. came for the topic that's it. You can go away now. You can bye live bye. Your life. But if you want to be one of the real ones that wants to just listen to us talk about this year on the podcast and stuff like that, then stay. Come on, pull up a chair, grab yourself a drink, and listen to us a ramble about our thoughts about the past year because it's been an interesting one. Um, we did a lot of stuff. We did. We didn't do a lot of the things we wanted to do. It was a very different year than I think we were expecting going into it. Uh, in a lot of ways, I think we were expecting mm. a lot more games. I think we were expecting a lot more variety. I think Hunter was not expecting a plane or whatever the fuck he's looking <laughs> up with that to be in his vicinity. He just saw something shiny. He was like, I can see season three, guys. It's worse <laughs> than season two. <laughs> oh my worse. God. Get out while you can. Get out while you can. Um, so, I think what we're going to do is... We're going to start with the stats that we did last year. We're going to follow up. We're going to do the stats. We're then going to talk about our goals from last year. And then we're going to do some similar things where we're going to talk about some of our favorite episodes, some of our least favorite episodes. I feel like it's a lot easier to talk about our least favorite episodes this year because we don't have to risk offending people that were on the show as much. So we can just be blatant. <laughs> and I'll be like, guys, I'm going to be real with you. I think these episodes weren't the best. <clears throat> And then you guys can write those down and then go and listen to those ones specifically. So you, to do that, you can just spite me with that. You can be like, let's make it the most listened to episode, guys. <laughs> um, but yeah, so we got a load of stats. So let's start with the big one. Uh, thank you. I feel like we should give a shout out here because someone has been doing God's work. Uh, every single week of the entire <laughs> oh, year. Yes. So I want to give a shout out to Tracy because she, she has Thank literally you, Tracy. been counting the number of times Hunter has said swell uh, this entire year. Well, at least in the intro. I don't know if she's been counting entire episodes. Maybe that's what we do next year. She on only too. keeps track of like the introduction ones, yes. Yeah. Well, you should start shoving swell into other parts of the podcast and see if they get picked up. That's the, that's like the giga <laughs> break. That's like oh the... man, she, she would never forgive me. Um, but no, thank you, uh, Tracy, for keeping track of this. So we can we can safely say I think it's because Tracy's also reminded Hunter in every episode because of the countdown as well. The Hunter said swell in every single episode of HGO this year. Every time episodes. it goes, every time the episodes go live or when we finish recording, and I tell my friends like what what 
it's a, it's a vouch she'll always ask me like is the swell count still intact <laughs> and i will always be like yes it is ah also, Kyle is editing stuff as we go, so we obviously got some stats wrong, and Kyle's fixing yep, them as we, we go. did. Well, we got something wrong. Oof. Right, anyway, it's fine. It wasn't Hunter saying swell, by the way. He did say that. <laughs> I so, did. I've also got last year's stats up as well, so what we're going to do is we're going to swap between them, because you can see how we've kind of grown and how it's differed. So, last year, we stated that we had done a total amount... The total amount of uh, podcast time was... 68 hours 33 minutes and 53 seconds uh we can now say that that has basically expanded to exactly or just over six days worth of podcasting which is now that means it's over 144 hours of podcast which means we've over doubled in this entire year which is crazy. That's because our average time has gone up as well. Our average episode length is now one hour 23 minutes and 27 minutes seconds uh it before it was an hour 20 but uh, so it was an hour 20 so we've gone up by seven minutes but that is because last year was heavily pa- that one hour 20 was heavily padded last year by the three and a quarter hour <laughs> hto spoiler cast of persona 5 we did yeah, not include so five. <laughs> did a lot of like work there it's also really important to note that spoiler cast last year counted towards the podcast stats this year they don't because they were spinned off into their own show so this that number does not include the hours of podcast uh, spoiler cast that we did for life is strange or for persona 5 strikers which is an interesting little tidbit for you there um so yeah they don't even affect that average anymore but the average is higher and god yeah that persona fucking one really did ruin the average because i think the average was actually something along the islands of one hour 10 or something for season one so <laughs> There you go. In the, statistics, we call that an outlier. An outlier. Thank you, Mr. Mathematician. Uh, You're welcome. Nerd. <laughs> <laughs> That's one way of putting it. Um, the longest episode that Do we you did. Fight Hunter. Uh, <laughs> Square up, scumbag. Let's All go. Right, let's go. Season three is the uh, the, the war arc. <laughs> We're gonna the, the maybe fighting words. Uh, Longest episode this year was 27 amazing RPGs you need to play. It was, was this the second 3x3 episode that we did? It was the second 3x3 episode that we did. Second and the last one we did. They're coming back. Don't you worry, guys. They're coming back. April and May are looking like pretty 3x3 months. Uh, Two hours, 36 minutes and 38 seconds is our longest. Which, if you, that is our longest episode of the HGO podcast by a large margin if you do not count the persona 5 royal spoiler cast which i don't because we spun we spun those off so if we don't count that that is the longest episode by like a fucking landslide i actually think the second longest is the over three by three episode at two hours 11 minutes so probably yeah yeah that's a very long episode but you guys seem to like it so uh thanks i guess for listening to two and a half hours of that uh (laughs) the shortest episode was Ratchet and Clank and Guilty Gear Strive impressions, which was 65 yeah. pretty early on in the run. Uh, we originally thought it was Elden Ring, but apparently Ratchet and Clank is shorter. How it's much? only 58, 58 minutes. Wow, we subbed an hour on one episode? Fuck. Yeah, I'm looking we at it. Co- we might have packed it in early, because that was right at the middle of E3. I think that's what we did, yeah. Maybe. We gave up. But yeah, it was Guilty <laughs> Gear, Ratchet, and um, FF7 Integrated first impressions in that. Mm-hmm. And all of that was under an hour. Those were the days when we just used to fit everything into an hour. Sometimes now we can have one fucking game and we can still chat enough shit to get past that hour mark. Yeah. Um, shout outs to Pokemon. Shout outs to Pokemon, <laughs> dude. Salu. Um, anyway, our top five episodes of this year, we're doing all the, the stats for the podcast and YouTube have kind of stabilized this year which means they are roughly around the same area so last year we had a completely different top five video podcast and a completely different top five audio they're around the same here at least enough that i didn't want to go all the way out of my way (laughs) to write down every single one because they're all fall within around the same ranges so the top five episodes for this year in terms of engagement were well, honorable mention to Horizon Forbidden West is for Horizon Forbidden West overrated, which was the episode that came out just about three weeks ago. Uh, it's already number six, so shout out to that. People wondering why we fucking did 
is it overrated like nearly four times in a row that's why because you watch when we do that's it. why <laughs> that's why it gets views um, and number five it was our e3 and summer game fest 2021 predictions uh, that was episode 64 and number four was our xenoblade 3 predictions hopes and dreams episode where we talked about it before it was even a thing and i think uh, if you do want to still want to know some of our similar thoughts and impressions, go and check that out because the mm. Imran Khan's report and leak about that game was so on point that everything that we said in that is still completely relevant. Um, <laughs> so yeah, go and check that one out. You guys seem to like that one a lot. Uh, and number three is, is Deathloop overrated? You guys really seem to love me and Hunter being the only people in the world that didn't think that Deathloop was a masterpiece. So we... It was that opening stinger, man. Well, I don't even know what the opening stinger was. It was the one where you photoshopped me over top of the Pulp Fiction guy. Oh, was that the episode? Oh, yeah, that the... oh we should. Oh, we should have a section be favorite intro stingers. Damn it! Oh well, that's one of them. We'll talk about it. We can. We can. Is, is Thanksgiving up. overrated? Was a good one. Is Thanksgiving overrated? Is also a pretty good one. Because <laughs> it was just um, a turkey over the Death Loop guy. <laughs> yeah, that was a pretty good one. Uh, we'll talk about more of those in a second. There is a couple more that I have fond, fond memories of. Uh, number two is Metro Dread overrated. Uh, episode number 82 and then number one why the fuck is this number one <laughs> is project al the next big fighting <laughs> game like why that was literally the thumbnail we spent an no hour time. trying to come up with what to talk about before it's, that too honestly because it was it, like the thanksgiving episode is thanksgiving overrated genuinely like, was that that episode yeah, that is that it was episode. <laughs> i had just finished death's door it honestly like it, it just goes to show, guys, it genuinely goes to show with this kind of stuff is, and it's definitely something that we're going to be working harder on, is the titles and thumbnails and stuff like that. Because it shows, it doesn't fucking matter what we say. We can put as much effort or as little effort as we want. At the end of the day, it's shit like this. Because there are so many episodes that we've done of this podcast, which I'm like, that's a banger. And then it doesn't do that great because we're just having fun, right? um mm -hmm. like we'll talk about favorite episodes in a bit um <clears throat> there's one in, that comes to my head which i'm like that's one of my favorite episodes that we did this year but it didn't get as much love as i wanted to and then fucking project Al, where we were just winging it because we had no clue what to talk about <laughs> that week is our number one um number two of all time by the way just want to throw that one out on video yeah. anyway um interesting of of those top five uh so those are the, our top five of the top five last year that we mentioned uh three of them have been knocked out of the top five so uh, so slots uh so uh slots one and two of the smash bros episode and then persona 5 royal spoiler cast persona 5 royal spoiler cast is now number five so two three and four are now new entries with project l metroid dread and mm -hmm. Deathloop taking those spots uh, another fun fact that I wanted to mention was between numbers two and three, so between uh, Persona 5 spoiler cast and I think it was, let me double check, the fantasy draft episode, between there now, not only has another episode that wasn't in the top five now gotten into that top five from that year, but now there's also eight to ten episodes of the podcast from this season between two and three. So the the views have very much scaled to more of you showing up more often. So we do appreciate it. Um, I also want to say the difference um, because we're for this we're, or season two we started counting spoiler casts as different things. If you remove royal spoiler cast, number five would be the Xenoblade three predictions mm. and hopes. Yeah, so, so. it's genuinely. Um, it's it's been an interesting one because we'll talk about growth and stuff like that and not being what but definitely more of you are showing up to watch more of the episodes which is great because it's like mm -hmm. we're building this little community and it's good to know now that for the most part even if we're doing something like triangle strategy i know that i don't have the fear anymore of like 12 people watching it <laughs> it's like that fear's <laughs> kind of gone um i was saying to hunter and kyle it's kind of nice to know that there are I think I said on last year's where I know that there's this group of 50 video slash audio listeners that will show up every week. It's good to know that there's at least 50 people just on video that will show up now every week. Mm -hmm. Never mind video and audio combined. So we really do appreciate it. In terms of appearances, fucking hell. Oh, this is, boy, oh boy. This, this is, is just sad. Hey, well, <laughs> I don't know. 
So out of the out of the fifty two episodes, I hosted fifty one of the episodes, and Kyle hosted one. Uh, I was sick for one episode, so I only appeared oh, yeah. in fifty one <laughs> episodes this year. I did appear in all, all the. I did appear in, yeah, every episode that I appeared in, I hosted. So there you go. But um, that's that narcissist. I know, right? I love how I kept saying I was like, yeah, other people can do it, and then I just end up doing it anyway. It's like. <laughs> I'm hitting the buttons. I have to record anyways. It's just easier if I yeah. lead because of that. Yeah. But yeah, that's that. Uh, Kyle and Hunter both showed up for all 52 episodes of the podcast this year. Well done, both of you. That is a massive improvement from your stats last year, Kyle. Yeah. Because uh, you went from th- you were 37 last year, and now you've gone from yeah. 37 to 52. So, well done. If- that's the only if we glow up though. The reviews and the spoiler casts. I think that means I'm was in everything that was uploaded this year. <laughs> that is, that is, that is. <laughs> Did you not miss a single reaction either? Oh right, I missed the reaction. Yeah. The ah, Nintendo we got one. it, boys. We got Streak it. Broken. Hey, it. My presence was it. felt though with Metroid. We got it with the half hour content. Strategically. We got it with the half Strategically content. not uploading my Legends Arceus review today. <sighs> I know, right? Unfortunate. Uh, <laughs> it's it. Well, it's not strategic. It was. I I needed the extra time with it because I didn't want to yeah, mind monkey I'm it. But like, yeah. yeah, if we had done that, we would have ruined your streak without having to cheapen with reactions. But hey, it's still broken anyway. Um, yeah, that's the only glow up though. Uh, Hunter was in forty nine <laughs> episodes, by the way, so he also had a glow up of three episodes. Uh, and Kyle had a glow up of 15 extra episodes. Everybody else took a nuke as we, uh, I don't know. It's it's less of a nuke, really. Obviously, people, we used to have a group of what we, we called regulars, right? Where it was like, mm-hmm. this was more of a group project. And especially when season two started, I think we both, we all saw where it was kind of going, uh, especially in early points. And now I now I consider obviously Jack and Sam and Kane they're still part of the HGO family and stuff like that they're still a part of the show but they are we we consider them more guests now than we do consider them regulars if that makes sense because they do literally as you can see show up once or twice a year hopefully that changes <laughs> in season three but instead of them being considered we used to consider it like a main cast and it'd be like everybody's a regular where now it is it's basically us three and then whoever we can drag on at this point it's basically our project um so in terms of guests uh our highest number of guests is jack and k uh, jack not jack and k uh jack and jacob which interesting fun fact about these two they both had two appearances the irony of this was jack was our first two guests of the season and jacob was our last two guests of the season <laughs> so balances out we kind of double dipped on our first and last um, but if Jack you think sh- about it, Jacob doubled his appearances from last year. He did double his appearances from last year. Uh, he's up to a total of three it. appearances now. So there you go. But now, uh, Jack showed up on yeah the first, the first fucking the sh- we'll get to the shooters episode, uh, and then obviously <laughs> Jacob will. showed up for ice levels and Pokemon. Uh, mm. Kane showed up in one episode this year. Uh, he showed up for his 2.1 review of Genshin Impact that he did on the podcast. We should also mention, yeah. though, that Kane also did work on other... St- oh, no, Kane's guides. You didn't show up in those either, you fucking liar. Oh, right. I forgot about those. <laughs> Kane, uh, Kane did some Genshin guides and stuff for us this year as well, so he hasn't been uh, absent from the channel. He just hasn't been on as much, which I think is because we very much, season two... For the lack of games we had, we very much did stick to talking about a lot of regular games and less topicy kind of stuff mm-hmm. for season two. So that's probably the reason why uh, Sam showed up once. It was a more recent appearance. Um, actually, Sam was the last guest appearance. So it wasn't Jake. Wasn't the last two appearances because Sam did show oh, up yeah. in the Elden Ring episode that was literally two weeks ago. Um, <laughs> Go team. Audio audio only though, so he doesn't fucking count. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I'm just messing. And then uh, this is shared hallucination. And then Gary also reappeared from season one for a second appearance. So that totaled five guests again, but three regulars became guests. So really it's gone down from eight to five. We didn't have any other guests, which I think is one of our main regrets this year is kind of not reaching out to people and getting people to come on the show, which we can hopefully uh, change. Uh, 
Shall we talk about some of these goals from last year real quick that we fucking yeah. we didn't <laughs> may, we didn't may or may not have met? Uh, Kyle's goal was for me to fucking stupid goal was for me to play Octopath Traveler and for us to do a spoiler cast. That didn't happen. It sure didn't. I do own the game. Of course, I don't even remember saying this. So this was your. Bullshit. I don't doubt that I did say it. This was your bullshit but... answer because you didn't have anything prepared, so you just made it up on the spot. And I was like, "This isn't a read. This isn't what I'm looking for." X to doubt, and also Hell X yeah. on it happening. <laughs> yeah. Um, more guests. That was an X. We had less guests. Uh, <laughs> I'm hoping that. In fact, the regulars the got downgraded. <laughs> the regulars got downgraded. Uh, I hope it's not the copium talking, but I would like more guests this year. I'm praying for it. I'm gonna. We're gonna. We're gonna get more people on the show this year i promise you that <laughs> much we will bully someone to be on this program damn it <laughs> this program if we call it a program now it's official now people have to watch now people have to come yeah. on the show the program uh here's something that we did succeed at get review copy of a video game we did get a review copy of the video game hunter also said hunter gets bonus points for this one he would we were talking about <laughs> people we'd love to get codes from square enix was mentioned obviously not atlas was mentioned obviously not hunter said they would be pretty great if we could get a review code for a super giant game we did get a review copy for a super giant game we got a hades review copy for playstation mm. 5 uh Big thanks to Supergiant for that and Private Division still again. I remember Private Division <laughs> gave them us because they because of that spiel I had to give at the start. So that's just stayed in my head forever. Yep. I don't remember who the characters <laughs> in Horizon Forbidden West are, but I remember that Private Division published Hades on console. So there you go. I'm only kidding. I know who they are. They're Erin and Vol. I remember their names now. Yeah. I'm just a genius now. You can't stop me. I'll forget them in a week though. Don't worry. <laughs> uh keep growing we technically did i don't know what we meant by that um if we were expecting massive growth i mean we did like we did have pretty decent growth i think we went up from like low uh we had we went from like high 70s to well we did we were at 120 but then fucking kirby fan decided to leave uh, <laughs> and the audit like viewer wise we have grown quite we have grown more substantially yeah. we no longer have 20 new more, episodes more we no consistent longer have views yeah stuff yeah. like that um it's not that unusual for an episode to hit 100 yeah i remember when we used to think that was crazy because only one episode ever did it and that was persona 5 yeah. and now <laughs> it's and we didn't count yoshilla because we thought that we were just using his name to get views basically uh mm. as much as i do like that episode um so now the fact that we do just consistently get episodes that will hit the hundreds mark and I'm just like, oh, cool. I'm not even like, though, that's crazy. Like Horizon's going to hit a hundred and I'm just going to, I'm just like, yeah. Yeah, cool. That's 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 cool. I hope to see more of that. I hope the consistency keeps going as we keep building that up. As far um, as other videos too, like all the reviews did better than mm. what I think with the exception. Shout out to the Evil. return or review, dude. Shout out to that oh, thing. Yeah. Little trooper. Good stuff. I feel like we have to talk about the update now just out of fucking respect for that review. It's true. Oh no. Oh no. <laughs> Sorry, I looked up and chicanery was happening in my brother's game. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, chicanery. the Returnal review. Surprising too, because we uploaded that on like Ratchet and Clank Day. You and I both thought we, we were thought sending it, was, it to die. We, we thought we were sending it to die. Jokes on you, jokes on us, because it just turned out all of our Ratchet content died. And <laughs> all of our Ratchet content died and Returnal lived, so. Because the Returnal yeah. podcast also did pretty decent, so it was like, wow. Returnal genuinely did surprise me about how much people were engaged with it. So, you know, I can't complain. If only we had gone back to the past, just picture it now. Imagine Returnal's release date. We called that episode is Returnal overrated. God, we we could be millionaires oh, yeah. right now. We could be in mansions, <laughs> guys. Think about it. That could have been the break crew. Don't worry, we'll be there next time. You're all gonna hate me. When 25 of the 52 <laughs> episodes are called Is Insert Game Here? Yeah. That's generous. I don't think there's going to be 25 episodes where we got new games. No, That's what you've We'll just use that on the topic. We'll use it for the old too. games as well. Yeah. Is Persona 3 uh, overrated where we finally talk about it properly? No, we've already done that. Oh, we have. <laughs> We still never did a proper yes. Persona 4 episode. Oh, we never did that Our Persona before. 3 and Yakuza 0 overrated. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't realize it was called overrated. I just thought 
I thought we I yep. did a video about them. I didn't realize we did an overrated episode. Oh my you god! You sure called it that's that? That's funny. I uh, forgot about that too. I've, I literally that's what that's my legacy is at this point for HGO is is insert game here overrated. Um, and we also talk about Mario Golf in that episode. I know, wonder it did terribly. Uh, take more risks. It got seventy six views. Oh, it did all right. Okay, five take... likes, two dislikes. It got dislikes. That always means it's a good video. If you dislike the video, <laughs> I know it's a good video because that means people that aren't our shills show up and they come and hate on it, and that's great. There's like an episode that has like sixty percent likes, forty percent dislikes, and that's when I knew I found the fanboys. Like they had found us. <laughs> I can't remember. Was it was the, the Xbox SMT episode. It was an it was Xbox the, one. It was yeah. the Xbox oh. one, and I love it because that means it went out of our audience. I was like, hell yeah! Jokes on you. I own one now. Fuck you. Get in the bit. <laughs> And I also use it once to play games on Game Pass. Let's go. Uh, take more risks. I mean, you can... I think we went more out of our comfort zone this time. I feel like the, mm-hmm. first, the first season of the podcast, I have always talked about it. Is It's more like... It very much is like a warm-up season. It was very much... It was very formal still. We were very like polite to each other it was not there was no real jabs it was very much oh yes it's your turn oh that's great next person oh, that's, and we still have that <laughs> and i feel like there's especially when you're doing a podcast like this where everyone's in different places at different times it's a lot harder to have those kinds of back and forths kind of more uh mm. like having those more kind of active conversations because you have those yeah. delays you have stuff like that it's a lot easy it's a lot harder to bounce off each other that rapidly but I do think we have gotten better with that. And I think that's definitely something that as we go forward, we are learning to, I don't know, be ourselves more. I feel like, I feel like we're a lot more like ourselves now than we were when we started this, because I feel like before we You've were just... never seen more of the real me than when I lost my mind during the uh, draft episode this year. <laughs> Same here. Yeah. Like, <laughs> Like, I don't know. Other than, yeah, I feel like, yeah, Kyle's, Kyle's, can, Kyle's very much Kyle, except I feel like you, I feel like you're the, the one, the person that talks the least on the podcast. Person. Yeah, I mean, I talk that's the just mo- how I am. I do, yeah, which is true. I talk the most. You're the host, you have to talk the most. Yeah, but yeah, think about which it. is funny, which is funny because the, I think the main difference between me on podcast and off podcast is... Me on podcast, I very much have to lead the conversation, whereas I'm much more of a reactionary person when it comes to conversations. I mm-hmm. am very much a shit talker. Yes. So, um, I very much make jokes and bounce off of people more, whereas it's, for this, it's weird for me because I have to lead the conversation in a lot of ways. So, yeah. And then Hunter's, mm-hmm. Hunter is very much Hunter. Uh, yeah. Especially when he has a fucking mental breakdown over <laughs> random shit. <laughs> <laughs> unannounced silent hill game if that happens the, if that happens the podcast is ending that will be the final that episode. is the ending hunter's cancelled by me I'll, I'll fake information to get him out of here i'll be like hunter doesn't oh, man. It's, hunter isn't doing swell he's a liar and then that's it you're out you're <laughs> evil uh, hunter be like uh, one of our... you want to be like I'm doing bad. One of our yeah, so I'm one of our... <laughs> I'm not Hunter. <laughs> Puts on like a fedora. He's like I'm a different person. Uh, anyway, uh, put out more content. We did put out more content than than we did last year. Uh, we put out a, a variety of guides, reviewers, reactions. We did a lot more content than we did this year. Uh. I feel like that's something that we did. We again, we're planning on. We keep ramping stuff up, and I hope, I hope mm-hmm. next year, definitely taking more risks and stuff like that. I feel like there will be more interesting stuff, and I'll promise you, all the other videos that come out on this channel won't just be Hunter. I will promise you that much. <laughs> uh, both me and Kyle have videos in the works right now. Um, in fact, I think the first two videos that come out that aren't. Uh, HGO podcast episodes won't be from Hunter. So it'll be a very different kind of experience. Hmm. Uh, in terms of the reviews, we wanted to do more reviews. We did a similar amount, but they did better. Yeah, I feel like they were just better videos. And they were better general, videos. Too. I feel like we found yeah. more of a form and we <clears> got more of an editing style. My returnal review is still some of my best work, I think. That returnal review, I love that returnal review. 
from the content itself, but also I, I I don't like praising myself, but I really liked the edit of that because I feel like the edit of that review really did set the groundwork for the editing for the rest of them. Mm-hmm. Like yeah. now when I look at our, the way we edit our reviews or when you edit a review, the thing I always said to you was go and look at how I did the returnal review. That's how I look at it now is that's the way that we edit those in that kind of style. And that wasn't yeah. a really well made review. Yeah, all around. I was very happy with that one. Uh, obviously, Kane's Genshin Impact Guides. That Genshin Impact Guide is now the most viewed fucking video on the channel or something. So that's That crazy. one that popped off and the other one that existed. The other one did not. The other one did decent. It didn't do incredible as much as the other one, but I don't think anything could, really. The other one got like 116 yeah. views, so it still did decent. And then there was the one episode, there was the one Genshin video, which we'll salute to that one. They got like 19 views because it was about drop rates and drops and stuff. Like it was like pulls the day after an update came out and the recording was from the pre- prior update. And that was like <laughs> the worst timing ever. No wonder no one watched it. Yeah. I'm saying it's actually the it's least Sam to make us a Elden Ring guide. Yeah. That'd be funny. That Genshin I'm video tempted. was tied I'm all... with episode 5 of the podcast for our least viewed video. Hell yeah, dude. Everybody go and view that just so Kane feels a bit better than episode 5 of the podcast. <laughs> <laughs> we were talking uh... about Persona, Persona 4 and Final Fantasy 7 Remake for like the oh, second oh week God. in a row. Do you remember? That was the third, right. that was like the third week the third in a row. Week. Do you remember Hell when... Yeah. The, oh God, the podcast used to be so shit, guys. How the... I mean, like... <laughs> it was literally just... If this was still going on, we would have just talked about Horizon and Triangle Strategy some more. Yeah. If we were using that methodology. Mm. Yeah, that... that um, we definitely... That methodology has definitely gone away. And I feel like it will... I feel, especially Stay with away. season three and what we were planning on doing, I genuinely think that the 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 you'll hear first impressions, and then you might hear final impressions, or if there's a review out, you might hear about it then. But it's like I don't see us doing the constant updates on video games anymore. Um, yeah, mainly because there's only so much you can say about a video game there's until no you've reason. fucking beaten it. You can have your first impressions, but. I don't my diff my my opinions don't differ from the first third to the second third. It's like my my opinions may differ from the first third to the end, but like that middle ground, there's no real point. So, uh, yeah, uh, we did more than fifty two episodes. We technically did fifty four, including the spoiler casts, uh, and then do a live HG episode, which we still haven't done. Um, main reason is we. With, especially with how I've got this new setup sorted, um, we very much could right now do a live episode of the podcast. That is not out of the realm of possibility. It's just, I don't want to just do it for the sake of it. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah. I'd want yeah. it to be special. I'd want to do something like that um, for a reason. I've thought about doing it. It's it's one of those things that one day I hope to do, but I don't want to just do it for the sake of it. Um, yeah. We also haven't experimented with Twitch or anything like that at all. Uh, and we don't have access to YouTube live stuff right now, I don't think. Or maybe we do. I hate YouTube live stuff, so who knows? <laughs> I've not really touched it. <laughs> but there you go. There's a load of stats and goals. Um, I don't know. Let's. I've been talking a lot. So let's go over some favorite episodes and moments, guys. Um like I said to you guys before the podcast, we can be more brutally honest here. And there's been less guests. We can we can literally we can be honest with each other. What did we like? What did we not like? Um I don't know if one of you wants to get the ball rolling on that. So I really liked both of the three by three episodes. They are some of my <laughs> I favorite episodes. I, I liked the second one more than the first one. So did so did I, because I feel like we got it. I feel like a lot of yeah. times with mm-hmm. videos and with podcast ideas. I think sometimes it does take that second go around to know what is up and know what to do. Like yeah. that first one I like, but it does still kind of feel like we don't really get it, if that makes sense. Whereas the second one, we were at each other's throats for quite a few of them. And there was like <laughs> God, some the funny moments. went on for so long. And we just kept sure going. Did. And it, it's one of my, it is one of my favorite episodes. Definitely an underrated episode if you guys haven't checked that one out. I, um, that was a good one. At one point, I got up to go to the bathroom. 
that's how it just went on for so freaking long, dude. <laughs> well, yeah, because usually, like, I know a lot of podcasts have bathroom breaks and take a step away and stuff like We don't. We record these in one shot. So if an episode's three hours, that well done. We spent three hours without stopping and going. Um, that was me in this in the spoiler cast of P five spoiler cast. Yeah. Yeah. Um. So. What a fun time that was. Yeah, the three by three episodes. I do want to do more of them. Um, mm-hmm. They are fun episodes to do. Um, God, I'm, I'm just. I'm a big fan of our of our themed episodes. Uh, the HGAs were a lot of fun, and so was the the Halloween episode again. Like, mm-hmm. oh. I just really enjoy doing the Halloween episodes. Mark this down as a biggest regret: the Joker mask was so uncomfortable <laughs> for me. Like, if you watch that video back, I, there was not a moment where I'm not p- moving it because mm-hmm. it was very tight on my face. Yeah, get, biggest regret, dude, that Anne costume was too comfortable and I haven't worn it since. That's the biggest regret. <laughs> I should be wearing that more often because it was actually far too comfortable. And I guess my biggest regret is that the sunglasses I got for the Bo Burnham costume were also kind of small. <laughs> So, and also Not my lights, Ethan's render. My lights made Ethan's render take nine hours. Oh, that is a big regret. Yeah, fuck that. <laughs> that was awful. That was awful. You guys don't understand. That episode genuinely took me a day to fucking render. I had to literally go to sleep and hope that it was ready for in the morning before I went to work to upload it. It was awful. Like I still feel bad about that. I know that none of us like. I didn't know that it would do that. It makes sense in hindsight. Oh, no, it makes 100% sense now. I feel like I was an idiot to not pick that up. Yeah. But I was like, holy but shit. But, like, I, I feel bad, but I still chuckle at the message you sent when you found out how long the render was going to take. But I even remember Ethan, I sent, Ethan sent us a message to the group chat that's just like, Kyle, because of your stupid fucking light show, this render's taking eight hours. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> to put oh this to put this into perspective HGO podcast episodes because most of the editing is done live and because my computer is not terrible um, most of the time it takes roughly between 40 minutes and an hour to render about an hour and a half of podcast for mm-hmm. me. so the fact that it's not even a long episode of the podcast and no. it took eight, an hour, eight and a half it's, nine a, it's hours. an hour 20 that's an average yeah. episode of and the it podcast took, yeah, and it took an, it took eight and a half to nine hours to render but and it's just know, i had so, i had lights moving on basically every frame of that every video single frame. i had to render every single frame separately <laughs> and also the funny thing is was i noticed it and thank fuck i noticed it. i noticed i made an error like 10 minutes into the render oh and I was no like, if I, I that, like, there are errors in the, re- I'm not a perfect person, right? You guys will have seen, there will have been times when the intro flick is wrong or something like that. There are those times like that. But, God, I would have, fu- that fucking render was <laughs> painful. Um, yeah. I have learned my lesson for next year. So have I. No light shows. No light shows. Doubling the lights. <laughs> Double the <laughs> If you do that next year, the raw file's just going up. I'm like, yeah, fuck that <laughs> Um but no, favorite videos, what else? Um I kind of one that I like because one of my favorite episodes, it's just a random one. I loved the E3 is dead and NFT should be two episodes. Oh dude. <laughs> it's such a good title. First yeah. of all. Yeah. Um because that very much was an interest. Because when we're doing these kind of things and we're coming up with ideas for the podcast and what we should be doing, we have to think about it as if we know that you guys will watch and there's a certain group of you that will watch and listen every week, and that's great. But we know that we have to come up with something that people outside our audience will listen to mm-hmm. every week because we need to get more people in, basically. So it's like... And that episode is the perfect episode of an episode that a podcast would do once it already has its audience and they know that they can get views. Because there's nothing in that episode that screams to me, oh, yeah, it's random Timmy on the street's going to click on that and go, yeah, I want to do that. Because it's just us chatting shit and having fun for like an hour and a half and just chatting about a load of stuff. And <laughs> it, that is very much more of just us just shooting the shit and just having a conversation. And I very much do like that episode for for that. Yeah, um, that was that was a fun one to record. Yeah. So yeah, that's that's a good one. I'm just trying to look at all these other ones. Um, because hmm. there's so many 
like I I <clears throat> I do like a lot of the episodes that we've done this year. There's some that I don't like. Like I I can be more honest this year about the episodes I didn't like this year. Mm. Yeah. For example, there are a lot of episodes from the first half of this season that looking at them now, I'm like, why the fuck did we do these? Like I'm like <laughs> like looking at um there were quite a few weeks where we did stuff about like oh, yeah. j- j- the PSN store or that shit. And, oh yeah, the PSN um, store. <laughs> you know, there's just episodes like that and it's like ranking did... the Smash Bros. Fighter Pass ranking characters. I, th- I think that was one I had fun like That was a fun one, but it's also like That was like the uh why yeah, it, it, there's a lot. It was a very random time to do it. Yeah, there's a lot of <laughs> there's a lot of whys, and I'm like, yeah, like they're talking about like yeah, life is strange, true colors in the future, 2021 game delays. It's like I don't hate the episode, but it's like we're doing a lot of these kinds of talking about shit to shoot the shit. There's there's other mm-hmm. things where we're just chat like coming up with topics and chatting shit. Like, but this this is one of my favorite moments because it's such a it's literally it's the perfect encapsulation of fucking garbage truck on fire and that's f- our favorite first person shooters of all time. It's Dude. like one of the <laughs> oh it's one of the stupidest fucking episodes of this podcast we have ever done because who came up with that idea? Jack, who has never played first person shooters? Jack. Jack. Great episode. Who who guessed also on the episode? In that... Jack. Also in that episode was, hey, what's everyone's favorite strategy game? <laughs> yeah, we fielded, question fielded by Jack. I even also... though he doesn't play strategy games, he came up with the like, green army toy men. soldiers. Yeah. yeah, the green army men anecdote, which is. <laughs> I also also want to say about that episode. Um, this <laughs> Jacob messaged me with about that episode, and he's like. Why didn't you get me on this episode to talk about FPSs? And I'm like, did you actually watch the episode? I'm like, yeah, did you actually watch the episode? (laughs) Look, literally, this is the timestamps. Favorite first person shooters of all time. Jack tries to talk about RTS games. Why do people like open world games? Legend of Dragoon. Like, we literally... (laughs) (laughs) Legend of Dragoon. (laughs) Amazing. Like we literally did. Like <laughs> fuck all in terms of that topic. Legend it's, of Dragoon. It's just so funny. It is like <laughs> hilarious to me how fucking horrendous <laughs> that episode is. It's such a good way though. Of like it's so chaotic. And I'm just like, what the fuck is that? Mm-hmm. And like, don't get me wrong, it's like the consistency has definitely been there. I feel like the episodes this year have been far more consistent than last year in terms of quality. And they're like, it's more of the content that we did, the reasoning and the content behind it rather than the actual content itself. Like last, like if we look back at year one, there are plenty of episodes where I'm like, that episode shit, that episode shit, that episode shit. I won't mm. say it publicly, but I will, in my head, I'm like, I don't like this episode. I don't like this one. Whereas in this week, it's harder, but it's more of, you know, why did we talk about PSN store shutting down? Why didn't we just talk about something we actually wanted to talk about? And I feel like that was the that was the news of the week. And I think one thing that is one of my kind of hopes uh, that we do is we lean less on the news. I know, like, mm. and what I mean by that is if there's a game announcement or there's something that we really want to talk about, that's fair enough. But it's like we're not kind of funny games daily. We are not like easy allies. We're not people who talk about the news because I don't care. Never mind wanting to talk about it. I'm, I'm not particular. I just want to talk with my friends. And the thing that I don't really want to talk about is fucking, you know, the PSN store shut down, unless it's just us wanting to actually talk about the games we'll lose and shit like that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's like how we didn't really talk too much about the, like we talked about the eShop stuff, but we talked about it more instead of from a news point of view of when it's shutting down and how is this going to affect like, how is this going to affect the gaming industry as a whole? It was just, we're just talking about the games that we were going to miss and how it kind of sucked. Yeah. yeah. And how game, like... Pour one out for the Ace Attorney games I don't get to play. Yeah, <laughs> it's like stuff like that. And I definitely do want to lean less on the news because, my God. Yeah, some of those news episodes, especially in the early in the year, bit bit of a miss in my eyes. But hey. You gotta learn and from it. And then later in the season, all the news just came out the day after we uploaded. So we saved it. Saved us a job. It saved us a job. 
But you know, even if it's even when we did do news later in the year, I thought I think we handled it better personally. Mm-hmm. We didn't make it the whole show, or if we did, we would talk about it from our p- perspectives and like stuff like that instead of like whatever the fuck we like. I, let, let me put it this way: I don't remember what we talked about in the fucking Discord PSN shutdown bollocks episode. I genuinely have no clue what we talked about. Cal talks about not remembering anything from any episode. I remember stuff from episodes. I don't remember that episode at all. Like, I could watch that as a new viewer going, I don't remember any of this. At I'm all. I'm struggling to recall what it was, Heat 2. Yeah. Like, well, if Hunter doesn't... Re- Hunter literally watches every episode, so it's like... <laughs> Hunter puts us on as his white noise for his sleeping, so it's like... Yeah, right. <laughs> the mid-season, or the mid uh draft update where kyle was talking about where he's like i picked up nickelodeon all-stars because it might do numbers it literally woke me from my dozing (laughs) off (laughs) to laugh at dude i think i was on drugs last year (laughs) like you were Ethan, crazy. You weren't here. You weren't here when I told Hunter this story, but oh, I told him uh, about it. Oh, you did. <laughs> I did about how I almost picked up Strangers of Paradise yeah, on the, like, this the draft, you thinking, and then I it? came to my senses. <laughs> I, like, don't get me wrong. I think that game's going to be hilarious. Yeah, not but in it a looks good way. Generic though. as hell. Yeah, not in a good way. In a in a probably pretty bad way. Yeah. Um. Well, I know we focused on the news a lot. Did anyone else have any regrets this year other than not having guests on? I feel like that's the main one. Is it's been a lot that's of us three. Really yeah. the big one. Um, because besides not just just not having guests, like yeah, we lost a lot of Sam and Jack, which as re- a lot of our regulars. Which let's just I should I feel like we should specify this. This has not got anything to do with Sam and Jack. We've not fell out with Sam yeah. and Jack. We're still good friends with Sam. It's just life gets in the way. It's you know? ju- yeah. And especially Kyle for and I season, had a friendly game of Ludo with Sam and Jack the other day. I was asleep. Yeah, friendly. That was the word. I was asleep, so I don't know about that. Um, <laughs> yeah, Jack yeah, was yelling a lot. That sounds about right. He, he, was. Was he got the cucked. Ping. Yeah, he was probably blaming the ping. Dude. Probably yeah, the, dude, the NTSC version of the game is different. Yeah. Um, but no, it's it just happened that Jack and Sam at, were at this part of their life where, especially for year two, they couldn't show up as much. Mm-hmm. Year three, it's looking more optimistic. I'm not going to promise anything because I can't because it's their lives. It's not. Um, <laughs> yeah. not it's ours, and it's, it's that commitment, but it's looking it better. Was. It genuinely is looking better than it was before. And that's all we can really ask. So I do want more guests. Obviously, I want Sam and Jack and Kane to show up more often. Yeah. But I'd also like to have new faces. I'd like to bring people on. Obviously, Jake, we're going to bring Jacob back again and stuff like that. But I do mm-hmm. want to see new people because, you know, Jacob did start initially as a guest and I'd like to have more people on, work chemistries out. I'm not just wanting to bring people on for the sake of, come on so that we can get views, cheers. It's not necessarily yeah. that. It's just I want to have conversations with people. I just want to talk to people. I want to do more than talk about the PSN store shutdown. I want to talk about <laughs> actual stuff that we Make our guests make a three by three. Yeah. Bully the shit out of them. You know, the usual. It's like, that's the kind of stuff that I want to do. But... Who knows? Who knows? I don't know. Can you think of anything else? Mm. Well, the guest was like the main one. Um. Yeah, it's 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 yeah. kind of difficult. I don't think I can think of anything else. Um, I guess as far as like less for the podcast itself, but like reviewing things, I did definitely not review things when I didn't feel like the game was. <laughs> like worth it yeah 12 minutes and no more heroes 3 are the examples i keep saying where if i had reviewed them they would have gotten hesitant but i wasn't motivated to make a video about them same with me and Deathloop. Deathloop was supposed to be my review and i didn't do it it's it, it's one yeah. of those things where it's kind of hard especially when you know this is our ho- this is a hobby right this is what we do for downtime yeah. it's kind of hard to be like do I really want to put the 12 hours in? And we're working on alternatives. We are working on covering more games, maybe doing a review style format where it is more of a discussion, us kind of talking like this over gameplay instead of it just being a full on scripted review for some games. Not every game. We're still planning on doing more reviews and doing more of them this next year. But we can't do that for every game, especially because not all of us play every game. And also we don't have enough yeah. time. 
if we yeah, reviewed every game we if day. we if we recu- if we reviewed every game we played we'd be fucking we'd, this would be another job and i mean it already is close yeah. to me for it for me it's already close to another job because the amount of time i spend on it and i don't mind that it's just you know we can't do that the one I thing i can say that about me. that is it's not inherently 100 percent bias because even though i didn't really those were like games that i played and didn't hate but didn't particularly love Tales of Arise was my favorite game last year, and I didn't review that either. So mm-hmm. yeah, you know, yeah. I mean, I'm going through Triangle Strategy right now, and I don't even feel I I'm enjoying the game, but I don't feel motivated to want to make a review for it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's one of those interesting ones where we again, it's like we've been talking internally a lot about other content we can make and other things that we can do, and it's just it's one of those constant conversations because it's a hard balance, you know. We don't really talk mm-hmm. about it, but it's like we you know we dedicate however long it is usually it's a whole like because of procrastination or just hanging out because most of the time this is the one day of the week where we do all talk to each other and hang out it yeah. it's a, it's a, it becomes like a five hour night it becomes like an ordeal <laughs> basically to get this done and it's not be, it's not a challenge or anything like that but we do end up spending more time we don't just spend the 90 minutes and then go okay guys see you next week and that's it we're all done right it is a multi-hour process there's a lot of stuff that we all work on whether it's you know hunter doing reviews or it's me constantly working on the podcast or other projects and stuff like that there's a lot of stuff that goes on behind the scenes and it is kind of balancing that out and figuring out what you guys want what you guys don't um as always you can always contact us at hotgamesonly at gmail.com if you have ideas for what you want to see what you don't want to see we've had people come and say hey i don't particularly care about this or that but i do like this and like hey that helps because i can get an idea of what our audience like and don't like sometimes when you see numbers it's kind of hard to tell do our audience not like that or did I just market it wrong? Did I just not? Or give it the right sometimes it's there? just perplexing. The numbers just confuse you more. Mm-hmm. Like uh, <laughs> Arcadia Fallen has overtaken Metroid as far as reviews. Oh, has it? Go. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> it's at like 156 or something. And Metroid was at like 149. And is that our second best so... review now? It sure is. <laughs> There you go. I don't know how, I don't know why, but I'm happy about it. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> but no, it's yeah, it's um it yeah, it's 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 crazy. YouTube's such a wacky thing and it's hard to get it right and figure out what works and what doesn't. And it's we're gonna try to. We've got some other stuff. I don't yeah. want to talk about what our plans for season three are at all, because one, we frankly my attitude towards the next year is less of this season idea. Obviously, it's a new season. Obviously, it's a new kind of year for the show. But most of the time, year one and year two, we put stuff off. So we'd be like, okay, let's not focus on this until then. Or let's think about that again when the time comes. I don't want to do that. I'm like, we're just going to roll with it. If we come up with an idea mid-year and we want to do that mid-year, we're just going to do it. And it's like, if we, we're we just going to take it a step at a time instead of I came up with an idea a while ago and I set a deadline for myself. But... I am. Uh, I have been working on it since then. I haven't been putting it off. Mm-hmm. You know. Yeah, it's all. It's 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 a work in progress. So yeah, main goals are. I do want to like yeah, take more risks, make more content, try stuff, see what works, see what doesn't. Um, get more guests on. Uh, yeah. and I don't know. I don't know. I feel like yeah. Continue to enjoy it. I guess I don't want it to ever come to a point where I just think, oh, we're doing this for the sake of doing it. Is what I'm like. I don't want to just feel like, oh, we're just doing this because we have to. I don't want to do that. If that makes I've sense. never walked away from one of these being like, oh, well, that happened. <laughs> er. <laughs> I have no. It's that there have no. <laughs> <laughs> that no. There have been episodes where I feel like, oh, we've just we, we've just kind of put that. We've just done that for the sake. Like we we've come less prepared. I feel like. I feel yeah. like preparation is something that we are going to do more of this year is less of the yeah. shit. We're supposed to be recording 30 minutes ago. What's the topic? I feel like that's going to gonna, gonna go away a little bit. Not too much because I can't promise anything because I'm lazy as shit in terms of coming up with ideas for the podcast. We can discuss topics beforehand and sometimes these two will still not have them ready. I, mean, I, think, until... we've, I think we've gotten better at doing that this year. <laughs> yeah. It's... At being more prepared. Not yeah. procrastinating. And yeah, I feel like as we, yeah, like I say, it's, it's it's an ongoing thing. So it's like, we'll talk more about it. We've got some stuff for next week. And then we've also got 
some stuff in the future where I'm sure Hunter's got loads of content for us planned because me and Kyle just sit here and uh, reap the benefit, apparently. That's all we do. As Hunter <laughs> makes the reviews and we just sit back and go, ah, yes, content. Perfect. <laughs> Just say thank you for the content, Hunter. Thank you for the content, Mister. Oh look, That's Kane did a guy. My channel died too. <laughs> uh, hey, I'm. Uh, if you had told me that we had we had put more effort and be more fucking consistent with doing an edited podcast every fucking week instead of doing let's plays that take like no effort, I'd be like bullshit. But hey, apparently that's all we needed is a bit of content that required some effort. Yeah. I don't miss Let's Plays. I genuinely don't. It's one of those things. Yeah. Where if I if I I'd, I'd never want to fucking do it again. Or if I did want to do it, I'd want to do something special. I, I, got, I got two free months coming up. I might go back to doing one on my personal oh, channel. No, you <laughs> will not. Back to it. I've got some reviews for you. I want some content for you to do. Don't you? I'll keep you busy. If if you want more content to do, Hunter, I'll happily provide. <laughs> Oh man, Kyle like Kyle likes writing stuff. He just doesn't like editing. Maybe we'll have to chuck some stuff at you. Maybe we'll get some stuff happening. Oh, that'll be a fun experiment. <laughs> hey Hunter, want to edit a DNF dual first impressions video? <laughs> Lord knows I won't because it's still sitting on my computer. You know what's funny? That it was all recorded back when Spider Man came out. If I hadn't been on vacation, I probably would have done it for you. No, the thing is, like. It was either you are on vacation, like you were just busy. It was la like your vacation and your year end list, your year end oh, top right. ten. So I'm yeah. like, yeah, I don't want to message him. I it was don't Christmas break. Him. It was Christmas yeah. break, and oh. then Cal passed it to me, and I was like, sure. And then I was feeling ill, and then the holidays mm -hmm. happened, and then I had family around, and then all of a sudden I was back at work, and I was like, fuck. Well, I'll get to this eventually, and then I've just not had a chance. And here to... we are in March. So. <laughs> Oops. But also, if I really cared enough about it, I would do it myself. Hey, that'd be But good. that's the thing, like... It's an even playing field now. All three of us have jobs. We have the same <laughs> amount of not free time. Yeah, it's true. And some of mine's taken up with the podcast, so just say... Yeah. Uh, you don't. You guys don't have to sit. Here that's on why I Sunday. have to edit my own reviews again. Yeah, that's genuinely. <laughs> if you're wondering why Hunter has to edit his reviews again, it's because I'm like, dude, my whole Sunday is this fucking podcast. <laughs> I'm not spending my Saturday on the review. Uh, but no. I don't know. I don't have anything else to say, really, like, about this year, probably. Yeah, I think we've pretty much done it all. I just I actually do want to make a quick addendum, okay. if we even want to count this as so that we get our stats right. Yeah. Um, We talked about Hades for 36 minutes, and that's in the HGO playlist. Was that a podcast episode? It says podcast number 74. I don't know if uh, we want to count that or not, because it was basically just, you got a review copy, and I picked up the game also. No, but I think we did miss, I think we did miss a week, so we were catching up. So I think that does did technically we? count, yeah. Alright no, then. We did then. miss a week, it does count. 36 minutes of talking about Hades. Hell yeah, bring that average down, baby. That's still, bro still, an, still an hour 20 with that in the average, so. Yeah. <laughs> Hey, there you go. But hey, apparently we talked for an hour and thirty nine minutes last year, just about that without the topic. How the fuck did we do that? It was wild. Yeah, crazy. <laughs> I mean, we did just talk an hour about it in general, but you know, it's all good. Yeah. <laughs> but now let us know what your guys' favorite moments have been and stuff like that. Um. Oh, quickly before we forget, favorite intro skits. We didn't mention those. Oh, oh, oh right. God, there's um, so, so many of them were so good. It's hard to like pick a that's favorite. That's such a cop out answer. That is. I know. No, I've does got exercises. a couple. Yeah, that one's really good. The death loop one where you did the photoshopping me over the um, Pulp Fiction guy was great. Also, uh, um, the one, the, the one last week MS was really Paint. good. What was last week? It was the, the talking about triangle strategy and how it should. Oh, have the came box, the triangle shaped <laughs> box, and I pulled out my Triforce lamp. It, um, oh, that's a lamp. 
Yeah. I had no idea. The Mario, the Mario Kart one will always be my favorite. Mario I, Kart Eight, where with I the did MS the shitty Paint. Noodles. Yeah, I spent a lot of time on that one. Probably too much time, to be honest, for the bit. I don't know what episode that one's in. I honest. don't remember either. What was the what was the Ratchet? What was, what was the Ratchet and Clank one? I don't remember. There was oh, it's me doing something shitty. I don't remember. There's there's like I say, there's there's quite a few good ones. Um, it depends how, honestly, a lot of the time it depends on how much time I have left. It's like, it's how hot is the episode <laughs> running? If the episode isn't running hot, then I put quite a lot of time into it. Like the Mario fucking cart drawing of we should <laughs> buy this, which is still great. I still have that image somewhere. Um, <laughs> what was the Xenoblade one? Oh, it's me having a fucking exercise go. That's the ring fit one. That's the yeah. that's the ring oh, fit one. Oh yeah. I do like that one. I do like that one. That one. <laughs> Common man does exercise. There was the one about oh, me. I found it. That... <laughs> sorry, sorry, Hunter, didn't mean to cut you off. It's Persona 3 and Yakuza 0 is oh, the is Mario it? Kart 8 one. Oh, that's great. Oh. Yeah. We should buy this. <laughs> we should buy this. <laughs> there was one where uh, I just saw the picture again. I forget the context of the conversation <laughs> now, but it was talking about the difference in our voices where you said something about mine sounding intelligent. I'm like, oh, but you have your fancy British accent. Oh, yeah. Like, no, <laughs> my accent's stupid. And then you Photoshop oy, yourself oy, oy. over the chimney sweep guy or something <laughs> from Mary Poppins. Oh, I fucking love that we should buy this image as well, dude. I forgot what we those terrible fucking sunglasses that I drew on. <laughs> and Kyle's like fucking I don't know what it is that's like my favourite reaction <laughs> face of yours dude like I don't know what it is about that image it's just you look like so dead like I don't know why you just it's just such a good reaction image uh, that's that yeah that one's probably my favourite the Mario Kart one's probably my favourite I do like the ring fit one though common man does common exercise common exercise is also quite funny uh, oh, I do also love the Chaotic Eva has a podcast from 1545. That is. Oh, a, right. That was. <laughs> has a podcast. Iconic moment. Many good ones. Anyway, we've chatted enough shit. We're, we're, we've, we've chatted enough. <laughs> now you're in the. If you want to know what our conversation were really like, that's the last half an hour of this has very much not been a podcast. <laughs> yeah. It's just been us having a conversation. Well, there you go. Uh, I guess, as always, our links are on screen. Right now, uh, you can go <laughs> and follow us on Twitter if you want to keep up to date with us. They actually worked this time, not a minute into the podcast. Woo! Well, I know, right? We're learning. We're ready for year three now, baby. Uh, <laughs> but hey, We're unstoppable now. But hey, if you want to keep up to date with the show, that's cool. You can go and follow us on Twitter at Hot Gamers Only. Subscribe to the YouTube channel, youtube.com forward slash Hot Gamers Only. And hey, if you don't want to look at our stupid faces, that's cool too. You can head to your favorite podcast service, search for Hot Gamers Only, and find us on places like Spotify and apple podcasts and yeah with that that's been our show everybody thank you so much for listening slash watching this week uh we'll be back next week uh same time same place like i said don't expect don't expect like groundbreaking stuff okay kyle will still be here hunter will still be here <laughs> i might not be but you know Ethan be. won't be we're I voting won't. him off the island <laughs> oh. it's been fun guys it's been fun <laughs> can't wait for my redemption arc in season four when i come back from the grave Oh shit! Yeah. Be like, <laughs> did you know Spoilers. I have a podcast? It's this one. There you go. <laughs> but no, uh, thank you so much for supporting us for this year. We'll be back, I guess, for another round. Apparently, we're not done yet. You can't get rid of us that easily. Not yet, anyway. Who knows? <laughs> Who knows what next the next year has to offer? Maybe next year we'll just be like, this is. I'm done. I'm done. <laughs> Who knows? Or maybe next year Atlas will finally recognize us and they'll give us our copy of Persona 3 uh, Dancing in Moonlight for PS5 Remastered or whatever. Oh, like, wow, finally. What a riot. It's all I've ever wanted. The perfect gift for the 25th anniversary of Persona. Thank you, Atlas. Very cool. <laughs> um, but yeah. We'll be back next time anyway for more. Who knows what we're going to talk about? No clue. Oh, is Ghostwire out? Mm. Not yet. It's, not, it's the week after. God, I'm going to have to do a topic then. Padding already. But yeah, until then. Have an awesome week. Strangers of Paradise is out on the 15th. Son of a bitch, I'm in. Buy it? <laughs> oh man, let's go. I'm just saying. I'm here to kill chaos. Let's go.
The demo's out, guys. The demo's out. We could. <laughs> anyway. That's enough. We're, we're done. We're done. <laughs> Have an awesome week, guys. <laughs> we'll see you next time. Bye. See ya. Toodaloo.